My name is David with Off The Grind and unfortunately this video starts with a disclaimer. As I was editing this video, I found out that almost all of my footage was out of focus. Quite frustrating, but the information in the video is still valuable. So I thought we could play a game. Grab yourself your favorite beverage and for every video clip that's in focus, take a sip. I hope you enjoy the video. Sorry it's out of focus, but again, there's still good info in there. Cheers. I'm afraid there's been a lot of misinformation or partial truths surrounding the stock Bronco tie rod. And in this video, I wanna address exactly that. We've all heard that the Bronco tie rods are the weak point, specifically where the inner tie rod meets the outer tie rod at this threaded portion of it. That's a very weak point in the tie rod. Um, and that's a fact. What people don't say is it's designed to be the weak point in the steering system on the Bronco. When engineers are designing a system, one of the things that they have to think about is what is the failure point in this specific system? What is gonna go out first? So the Ford engineers designed the tie rod to be the weak point in the steering system because it's easy to change, parts are cheap, and easily accessible. Um, what no one talks about is the steering rack, which is truly the weak portion of the Bronco steering. The steering rack is a cast aluminum. It's very thin. It breaks uh, at the end cap most commonly, and the second most common place for it to break is on the pressure bearing housing that keeps um, the steering column in mesh with the actual steering rack. If I got those terms wrong, I'm, I apologize, but that's my understanding of that. The end cap, is not a super uncommon thing to break. Um, mind you, this is all under load, right? So if you're trying to turn your wheel past an immovable object, um, that's when people see these failures. The end cap is the most common thing to break after the tie rod, and then the actual uh, steering rack housing will break after that, but those are in more extreme conditions. We've been told that there are easy fixes uh, like the Bronc Buster brace um, or just tie rod sleeves that will support this section of the tie rod, kind of distribute the weight a little bit better. And they do exactly that. Um, but what you're doing by doing this without doing this is you're now making this the weak point in the system. Also, this is a Band-Aid. This is not, I ran this for a while because I was uneducated. When I was educated, I was very eager to switch. So sleeves or braces for the tie rods are not a good solution. They are a good backup solution. I will likely put these on my stock tie rods and maybe run that if I ever have a tie rod failure, which I don't think I will, given the new setup that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But um, these are a Band-Aid fix. They are not a permanent fix. And these are $400. Also around the $400 price point, they are these Icon heavy duty tie rods for the Bronco. You can see right off the bat, the tie rod end is much thicker. The actual threading is almost double the size, but your inner tie rod is also beefed up. So what is the proper solution for this if you're gonna tackle it? I think there's a couple things you could do. One, you could leave them alone, know that they're gonna break on a trail at some point, and carry spare tie rods. Um, I would, if you're not gonna do anything with the steering rack, I would not do anything with the tie rods because again, you're, the, you're putting the weak point on the steering rack. If the steering rack breaks, that's a full replacement. You're not driving for a while. Um, so if you, if you don't plan on addressing the steering rack, I would say don't mess with the tie rods. So solution number one. The second solution and the solution that I'm choosing is the upgraded Icon tie rods and then a steering rack end cap from 74 Weld. This piece is billet aluminum. It's really light and it is gorgeous. Well, they did uh, an absolutely stunning job on this, uh, on this piece, so I'm pretty stoked just to have it on the vehicle, but this is also so much stronger. Billet aluminum and thicker as opposed to 
um, a thin cast aluminum. I'll show you all that later, but this is a drastic upgrade from what comes stock and will alleviate a lot of the breakages you see. This piece alone is $1,000, so this is not a cheap solution, but this is the best, most reliable solution. Also going this route, one of the things you have to do is an alignment. Steering or suspension, you always have to get an alignment if you're messing with that stuff. So since we're replacing the tie rods, these do not come in spec. So you kind of have to eyeball it if you're doing this at home. Uh, I am going to compare the length of this to the length of the one I take off the Bronco. It is not going to get it in alignment, but it should be close enough to where I can drive it to the alignment shop. So that's something you need to consider when addressing these things, which is also why this appeals to a lot of people because you don't have to do that. But again, this is not a good solution. So let's get these on the Bronco and I'll walk you through that whole process and then um, we'll go from there. First things first, get the vehicle in the air and supported, then remove the tire. Once the tire is removed, turn the steering wheel to the side of the vehicle that you're working on. This will give you much better access to the inner tie rod. To remove the outer tie rod from the spindle, you will need a 21mm socket. With the bolt off, hit the spindle just outside of the bolt to free it up, then tap the end to push it out. You'll need to remove the tie rod boot hose clamp, which is impossible to get a shot of, but I used a pair of dykes and just cut it off. Next, take a large crescent wrench and break the inner tie rod loose. Once loose, you should be able to twist it off by hand the rest of the way. With the tie rod out of the way, it's time to get the end cap off. There are two bolts holding the steering rack in place. The passenger side bolt will need to be removed completely while the driver side can just be loosened. After that, there are seven T30 Torx screws, one of them facing the opposite direction. I just used a little quarter inch drive ratchet and had plenty of space to get in there to remove all of them. If the steering rack isn't moving around enough for you to be able to get in there, loosen the driver side bolt a little bit more. With all seven bolts removed, it's time to get the end cap off. You'll need to tap the end a little to get it loose, but once it's loose, it should come off by hand after that. I apologize for the lighting and this location. Not the greatest, but it doesn't need to be because I just want to show you the difference between the stock end cap and so like, look how thin that cast is. There's, it's not robust at all. They took as much metal away from this as possible. Um, so it's very thin and for the part, very brittle. So factory steering end cap. And then this is the 74 weld uh, end cap. As you can see, they did not remove excess metal. All of that's there to provide more support. It's all billet aluminum rather than a cast, which is stronger already. And then the walls of it uh, themselves are thicker. So this thing is not gonna break. <laughs> it's just not. Um, it's very, very excited to get this on. Um, it was a relatively easy process at this point. Uh, the only thing I would say is I didn't loosen both of the steering rack bolts at first. I just had the passenger side done, which is the side that the end cap is on. Um, just do both of them at the same time. It'll make your life so much easier. So uh, I got to clean the gasket off of the steering rack and then we can put this in place. Put some RTV on the new end cap and slide it back onto the steering rack. We are going to do everything we just did, but in reverse order. So put the seven bolts back in. Tighten the driver side steering rack bolt and replace the passenger side bolt.
screw on the new tie rod to the steering rack. Place the outer tie rod in the spindle and tighten. Then throw the wheel back on. All torque specs will be listed in the description. Now, it's time to get it aligned. Well, I need a refill. I hope you found that video informative. Like I said, I think there's been a lot of misinformation or partial truths surrounding this whole topic. Um, there are some very, very good solutions out there. While they are expensive solutions, they are the correct solutions for what the actual problem is with the Bronco. My intent was not to call out Bronc Buster specifically, more so all braces and sleeves and stuff like that. I know that Bronc Buster has an end cap option as well. In fact, they have um, a full steering rack upgrade and other things like that. So while I put 74 weld on mine, I love the company, I love the people, and I love what they're doing. Um, so I wanna support them in every way that I possibly can. Um, but it's not the only option. Uh, in my opinion, it's it's the best option out there. Um, they recommend Icon tie rods, which is why I went with Icon. So <clears throat> there are certainly other ways you can go about this if you want to. Um, in my personal opinion, with the knowledge that I have right now, the 74 weld steering end cap and the Icon tie rods are probably your best package. All right, I'm gonna go see what else I can film out of focus. But if you like the video, please like and subscribe, do all that stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one.